used in what they were uh, drafting, and they had numerous proposals throughout that hot summer of 1787 and rejected some, drafted more, and finally when they came up with, the, for example, how we elect the president, it was just a, uh, it was a method they came up with at the last minute because they had to finish up business and, and, uh, and that was it. So it wasn't, uh, my point is, is that we don't have to be, we worry about a copy of the brilliance of the founders because the founders were as, confu as confused as we are in trying to figure out what's best, but what they did do is they pushed forward with bold change nonetheless. So I wonder, would, um, I mean, when I think of what types of things we need to go to, I start thinking of things like proportional representation, parliamentary government, um, instant runoff voting to elect the executive offices, and, and some of these other changes that are, are, would really help to, to blow up the boxes, as Governor Schwarzenegger originally said he wanted to do. And I'm wondering if uh, any other thoughts you have about political reform and what we should be moving towards. Thank you for your comments. I agree with you. I think the big danger of having, a lot of people think, well, if you have a constitutional convention, you could have a runaway convention. It would be somehow be kind of this crazy thing that would, I don't know, put in whatever, socialism, Nazism, or something like that. But I think that's illogical because everything the convention would do would have to be ratified by voters. But really, the danger of a constitutional convention is not that they're going to be runaway. The danger is that they won't be, as you say, bold enough that the same kind of contradictions and conflicts that make the legislature in, ineffective would also infect the Constitutional Convention. It would be basically descend into kind of chaos, unable to agree on anything. So I think that's why when you have this convention, if in fact it occurs, it needs to be carefully drawn. The membership needs to be carefully drawn and the issues need to be carefully drawn so that it doesn't, doesn't just descend into some sort of chaos. So let me, let me do one on the uh, text messages. Uh, in this challenging, since I can't say apocalyptic very well, <laughs> fiscal climate does Apocalyptic, it's really easy to okay. say. Apocalyptic. In this apocalyptic. I use the word all time to describe Sacramento. <laughs> very good word. Right along there with dysfunction and that sort of thing. Okay, in this uh, wonderful fiscal climate, does calling a constitutional convention risk heightening short and medium term concerns in the financial markets? about the state of California's finances? Uh, well, I guess that's, that's possible. On the other hand, uh, the financial markets don't think much of California right now, do they? Because <laughs> we now have the lowest uh, bond credit rating of any state in the United States. Uh, and uh, I would think that any, anything that the state did to, number one, put its finances in order and bring some, some order out of chaos, this, this kind of chaotic gridlock, if that's not a contradiction in terms that we have now, the, uh, at least in the long run, the financial markets would think it would be a pretty good thing to do. Okay, to this microphone over here. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Michael Feinstein. I'm former mayor and city council member in Santa Monica and a co-founder of the Green Party here in the state. I'm a supporter of proportional re representation, but my question for you is about regional government. I work with Southern California Association of Governments. We're always talking about the difficulties of both counties and cities getting together. How would you see regional government and state government who has authority, what is the subsidiarity between them? Well, I mean, I'm not here to tell you what should be in that new constitution. I'm just saying that, that there ought to be uh, ways, to, we shouldn't be bold. Personally, I think the counties ought to be abolished. I think that they are an, an anarchism. After all, they were the territory of a count originally, and they make no much sense in this, in this kind of environment. We have counties with, a county with 1,200 people in it, and a county with 10 million people, both with five member boards of supervisors. Ah, come on, that does not make any sense whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah, I think we, could, we, should, we should have units of local or regional government that make sense to begin with. And the relationship to the state needs to be terribly clarified since it's a, an almost a stepchild, wicked stepmother relationship now. It could be a contractual relationship rather than a dependency relationship. There are all sorts of ways one could do it, but the lines of authority need to be clarified. We don't have this pass the buck situation. We don't have robbing Peter to pay Paul situations. We need to have a, a simpler, more direct system of governance so that the, if nothing else, so the people of California know who's governing them. They don't even know that now. And that would, I think, eliminating a lot of these small units of local government, creating sort of regional bodies would, would be a step in that direction. Okay, we have time for one more question on this side, and then for those of you in line, we will have time for questions as well as we go forward. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you. I'm Sarah Christie with the California Coastal Commission. The previous speaker at this mic mentioned instant runoff voting. I'd like to really encourage everyone to put that on the agenda of things to discuss. But my question is, what's to prevent all of the competing stakeholders that have 
driven this state to a, a accomplish nothing governance. What's to prevent those same stakeholders from essentially canceling each other out in the constitutional convention process? That's just exactly what I mentioned before. The greatest danger of this constitutional convention that it would be subject to the same kinds of forces that prevent governance of California in the first place. And that's why we need to create a rational structure of governance of the convention as a prelude for the conventions creating a rational structure of government for the state. If we just simply say, here you are, go to work, it won't work. You need a rational structure, a, 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 something that defines what this convention is supposed to do, defines the rules under which they are supposed to operate, defines carefully who will be, who will be appointed or, or elected to this, this convention, so that they have a, a clear path to doing work rather than just sitting there and debating how many angels can dance on the head of a, of a pin. And that's, a very, that's very important. The writing of the structure of the convention will be the hinge point that will de probably decide whether it's successful or, or a failure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Dan. As usual, 